very quiet, peaceful. Let's try. Kader? Turn right. Do you see a camel there? <laughs> we are heading towards the graveyard. This is a private property actually. This dude is just getting thinner and thinner. Perfect setup. Hello, hello, hello again. I'm Caner. I'm with you with another travel vlog. I'm in Turkey. I came to here to shot you a really nice travel vlogs. I'm in Cappadocia right now. You call it Cappadocia, but I call it Cappadocia in my language. This is a really famous place. Everyone around the world want to come and visit this place. And I know when I tell everyone that I'm from Turkey and they're like, oh, have you ever been in Cappadocia? And I was like, yes, now I'm here for you so that I want to show you around because this is the one of the best places in Turkey. You can do lots of things. You can join the tours. You can do hot air ballooning. One of the best in the world. You know, I'm not gonna be humble about it. When you talk about hot air ballooning, Cappadocia is the best place in the world. If you don't believe me, you can always come and check. And also, the hotels are really unique here because the it is not like a standard hotel. The most important thing where you're staying most of the time, they're cave, they're literally stone. They just dig the stone. They created this place for you to stay. I'm really excited to show you my room. Welcome to my room, guys. I'll start with the bathroom. As you can see, I have a really nice bathtub, shower and toilet. And this is a resting area. As you can see, a mini bar, tea station over here. And actually, surprisingly, it takes really nice sunlight. And this is the bedroom. And this is the cave. Thousands of years of, you know, history here. And as you can see, it's totally unique experience. That's what I wanted to show you because I've been to hotels too many times in my life since I'm a pilot. This is unique. I like these boutique hotels that offers unique experiences. For me, it's more fun. I always choose to stay at this kind of places so I can feel the vibe. This is the vibe. When you visit the Cappadocia, I strongly recommend you to stay in this hotel. I will put it down to a link and then, you know, you can check the hotel. The owner and the manager is a great people, so you can contact with them and you can have a stay here. I know that you will enjoy. I will have four full days for you. I'll be doing each attraction that possible I can do during that time. Cappadocia is famous with the fairy chimneys and you can see these chimneys all around this region. All of this form of astonishing landscape has been created by volcanic eruptions. And after thousands of thousands of years with the, you know, rain, flooding and the wind, this unique, spectacular shape has been formed. This is, by the way, not man-made, huh? they're all natural. Why it is called fairy chimneys? People believe that these places were the houses for the fairies because it's so surreal for humans especially. They cannot believe that the form of the nature. So people always believe that this is the house of the fairies. This is the story behind. This location, Cappadocia, is in the center of Turkey, so central Anatolian and there's a lot to offer for you guys. Please, please, please come and visit my country. There's 
silent, very quiet, peaceful. Four a.m. in the morning. If you come here or anywhere in your hotel, if you go to you know rooftop, you will see here hundreds of hot air balloons are you know lifting off, and then it's the best view ever. You can see the ladies are having their nice dresses with them. They take a picture with the balloons and everything. So, but to be honest, the prices are extremely expensive. It's like people are talking about 200 euros per person. It's almost impossible for a Turkish guy to come here unless they're really wealthy. Two guys, like you have to pay 400 euros for an hour. It's way more expensive than the plane tickets, you know. I just came from Izmir to Kayseri, the city that I landed. I paid like two round tickets from Izmir to Kayseri, Kayseri to Izmir, and I paid around two hundred dollars. And standalone for one hour hot air balloon per person, I have to pay around two hundred euros. It's too expensive. Just have some, you know, nice budget. Don't skip the hot air balloons. Well, and don't say, oh, it's expensive, because this is a lifetime experience. It's dinner time right now. We are in the number one restaurant in Göreme region. We are in the steakhouse, Oscar Steakhouse. Literally this restaurant, I went to TripAdvisor and then I checked what's the best restaurant to eat in Göreme. I love steak. And I was looking for the addresses and guess what? This is the same hotel that we are staying. And the, my friend, I didn't know that literally, <laughs> he is the manager of this branch and he made this restaurant number one in Göreme region. The steaks are great. The, it's a little bit pricey though, when you think about the Turkish conditions, it's like, you know, a steak and a wine, something around $30. But I wanted to have really nice meal for today. I also paired my steak with a local wine because Cappadocia region is really famous with the wineries, wine yards as well. And for you guys, if you didn't watch my <laughs> wine tasting video in South Africa, you can always go back and check it out. But also Turkish wines are great. And I strongly believe that Turkish wines should be advertised better because people don't know when it comes to South African, Argentinian, Chile, French wines is very well known. But Turkish wines, unfortunately, they're not the, you know, very well known in the world. This place definitely deserves to be the number one in this region. I ate steak all around the world, but this is something really great. I really liked it. Perfect setup. Dinner was great yesterday. So today we joined the green tour. Basically there are two tours in Cappadocia. One is red, one is green. Green is the larger area and covers many different things, but you're far away from the Nevşehir and city center Urgüp Göreme. I would like to now talk a little bit about the Cappadocia region. It's like a historical region name. So Cappadocia guys actually covers five or six different provinces like Aksaray, Kırşehir, um, Nevşehir, Kayseri creates the region of Cappadocia. People believe that this name comes from originally 
uh, from Persian, so Iranian people right now. So they were settled in the first time here and also they named this one and they, they had horses here. So this region is very famous with the horses and you know they were raising these horses from here and send them back to Iran like Persia back then of course and that's why they kept this name and they, all other nations like nations that lived afterwards the Persian people they named this region Cappadocia now is Cappadocia a very famous region now I want to show you everyone guys there's a really great scenery here the landscape as I discussed yesterday is created by thousands of thousands of years wind flood raining temperature differences and because it's continental climate here so during summertime the temperature can get really high here and the winter time can get really low so the summertime the rocks expand the winter time rocks are shrinking up so therefore there's always a movement here and you can see these with the combination of rain and the wind is very windy area then you can see this great amazing nature Yeah, as we keep walking, I'm so amazed, thousands of years ago. It's a little bit claustrophobic. If you have any phobia, I assure you that you will have a problem here. Continue from the tunnels. Ooh. Now it's getting really, really narrow. This is the stable where they kept the animals. Put here horses and cows, sheep and goats, very small animals are here. This is the place where they kept the food. This is the area where they were smashing the grapes and preparing their wines. And by the way, they were not living here forever, right? They were living here maybe 30 days in a year when the enemies just arrived to the city. They were living underground, but normally they had their own houses on top of the, on the ground level. Now we are heading towards the graveyard session. Again, it's very narrow. Katie, now we are going to graveyard. <laughs> Nothing fancy. Okay, now I will tell a brief story of these underground cities. This region has more than 100 different underground cities. This is the most common one and it's like most preserved one. People believe that it took 100, 150 years to build all this construction over there. And the thing is like when they build it first, the, I don't know how to pronounce it in English, it's like high to people, they came here and they make only two levels. And after that, these Christian people just came, the Roman people who chose to be Christian, and they came here and they were hiding because the pagan people wanted to kill them. So Christian people constructed these underground cities and then, you know, they were hiding there. We reached down bottom, like mine, like 50 meters down and mine seventh floor and then yet still you have three more floors to go down that's really amazing astonishing so if you ever visit Cappadocia I would recommend you to come here and check it out because it's really really cool thing to see Okay, now we are fast moving in history. We were in an underground city. And that time, as I told you, the Christians were hiding from the pagans because they were trying to kill the Christians. But now we're moving fast, right? And time passed. Christianity just spread all around. And finally, the Romans 
accepted the Christianity as an official religion in the country. And then everyone started being Christian. And then people didn't need to live underground cities anymore. They just moved around. And then they started building some places. This place used to be as a monastery. Yes, this is the educational place for Christian people. It's like a whole complete facility. Education here is separated by men and women, right? The place that right now I'm standing at was used by men, monks. But if you have a look at there, just across the, you know, valley over there, there are small houses just digged into the cave. This is for nuns. Yeah, this is for nuns. Now we fast forward again. And after the Christianity, the Salchuk guys came to Anatolia and they created their own settlement here. So these places no longer used as a monastery, but the caravan sarai. Caravan means like small groups who are traveling and the sarai is a palace. So this is like a modern days, old ancient days Airbnbs guys. So basically people on the Silk Way who were crossing through China to Europe, Anatolia is the main passage point for those waypoints. So those guys were traveling from far east towards to Europe and towards to Istanbul where they sailed from Istanbul to other part of the world. So that was a stop for them to get some food, have a rest, feed their animals and then walk. Because all times people will be able to walk 20-25 kilometers per day. So you can see this caravansarai once every 20-25 kilometers. This caravansarai is a little bit high. You might think of how do they bring their animals to here. So the first stop over there, they were carrying their animals with themselves. And it's not that uphill slope. And then they, they were tying their animals there and then the upper level is used to, for accommodations and food and eating and all, all kinds of things. Almost done for today. Now we arrive to Pigeon Valley, as you can see. Our friends are here and it offers an amazing view so you can enjoy astonishing view and at the same time you can feed the pigeons Today is the balloon days and we woke up 3 a.m. in the morning. It's 3 30 already. In 10 minutes we are gonna have some pickup. I don't speak very loudly because people just around me sleeping and I don't want to make any noise and disturb them. The balloon starts, you know, flight starts at the morning with the sunrise. Therefore we needed to wake up very early in the morning. I'm super excited because for the last two, three days flights have been cancelled. So this is going to be one of the first days that the flights will be allowed again because it's all about the wind. Now we boarded, ready for departure. Welcome to Cappadocia, welcome to Air Cappadocia Balloon. My name is Ibrahim, his name is Osman, today your captain. Our flight standard flight, about one hour. 
maybe 15 minutes more, maybe less. Because balloon only wind direction, only more up, only more down. Does it affect you go left or right? Now, departure time. As you can see, most of the balloons just departed.